Hi guys, welcome to the XO Mary Mac Show. I am your host, Mary Mac, and I have my guest today, Landon. How are you doing? I'm well. How about you? I'm doing great. Fantastic day today. Um, excited to be here. Learn a little bit more. Learn a little bit more about you, and just talk about myself a little bit. Yes, we supposed to be learning about you. We 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 don't, we don't need to learn about me. Okay, all right, I'm with that too. Now nah, we can talk. learn about me. I was being funny. Okay, it was a okay, joke. okay. All right. It was a total joke. It goes both ways. It's a whole conversation. Say no more. It's a whole conversation. So, but at the end though, you get to ask me a question. But we're gonna be talking. So if you think of anything oh, at the end, you can you can ask me a question. I love it. <laughs> so. You have a few businesses that you run um, here in Spartanburg. You have Coco Bowl. Mm-hmm. How was that? Like, how did that come about? Okay, all right. So, um, I used to play in the NFL, right? right? And I've always been a big, big guy. I love food. Um, so, you got to get a certain amount of calories in every single yeah. day in order to maintain this size. So, uh, I'm used to eating a lot, but I want to like, you know, stay fit, stay looking good to a certain extent. So, uh, I'm always into trying different healthy options. So one of my business partners in my, uh, tech slash cryptocurrency company, he's like, Hey man, have you ever had, uh, this thing called Coco Balls? And I'm like, nah, what is it? He's like, Oh man, I gotta take you. So, uh, he takes me there. Um, I taste it. I started looking around and I was like, oh, this is it. This yeah. is fantastic. This is something that Spartanburg needs because it, you know, when it comes to healthy options for food, it's, it's slim to none. Yeah, it's really slim. So, uh, tasted it. I thought it was great. I met the founder. I thought he was an awesome dude. He's, uh, uh, from New Jersey. His story is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to buy into his franchise and, uh, I figured downtown Spartanburg was a great place to start. How was your opening? How did that go? Oh, it was great. Um, we stacked the deck. I invited, uh, you know, a hundred, uh, youth from Spartanburg to come mm-hmm. try Cocoa Bowls. Uh, the lineup for the grand opening, we had a DJ, um, we had You know, people, you know, it was a training day as well as a, uh, a fun day to introduce people to the crowd. Yeah, so you didn't have the mayor. Oh yeah, no, no, that's my guy now, now, uh, Mayor Rice, he was my football coach. Oh wow. And, uh, interesting story about him, he, um, he was the first person that told, you know, that really, really, uh, let me understand what it meant to believe in myself, right? Mm-hmm. So I remember being about 17 years old and he's my high school coach. I'm ball, like ball, ball. He's <laughs> like, hey man, where you want to go to college? And I was like, you know, something like Walford or Appalachian State. And at that time they were like division one double A. Uh, and nothing against those schools. They, they were all great schools, but he was like, nah, man, you need to be thinking like Clemson. Florida State, Florida. Um, yeah. So um, from that day forward, I, I, that was the last day I would ever sell myself short on anything. Yeah. Where did you end up going to college? Ohio University. Okay. Um, and, you know, I went to Ohio University. It was six and a half hours away. Um, there was a coach who recruited my brother to go to the Citadel who went to Ohio. Okay. And he had kind of watched me since I was in the eighth grade. So he had to, I was like, oh, yeah. if I get him, it's a, you know, that's a, he knew what it was. Yeah, he knew what the deal was. So, yeah. um, it was, it was great. I still talk to Coach Sands all the time. He called me about a week ago. I didn't even call him back. <laughs> So I'm saying, I'm gonna call you back, man. I promise. You gotta call it man back. Yeah. I actually um, interviewed Maya Rice um, about two weeks ago, like a week and a half ago. Okay. He's a super dope guy. Um, but he told me about how he inspires young kids and just to be the best that they can be. And that that's really good that, I mean, that you're one of those yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely one of those kids who are. And in return, anything that he would ask me to do Mm -hmm. when I was playing, I would do it. So he was kind of like an administrator, kind of student, 
uh, administrator liaison at Mary H. Wright, and he would have me at Mary H. Wright being like a test proctor. <laughs> uh, he would have me like giving, uh, you know, like giving the teachers a break on lunch. Yeah. So that instead of having to sit with their kids, he would call me, hey man, these teachers need a break. Yeah. I'm over here and, uh, and I'd be like, you my man, like I got you. So, but in uh, turn, that shows the kids, like one, like we talked about, like I have the mayor at my school. Like even my daughter, she was like, you're interviewing the real mayor? Like out of all the celebrities I'm around, she was so stoked about me interviewing the mayor. And I'm like, you're really over the top about that? But for the kids to see somebody in their school, like a high authority or like a celebrity, somebody that plays ball, you know, things like that, it's like amazing for them. Yeah, no, he's, uh, no, Mayor Rice is outstanding. He's, uh, that's my guy. I talked to him yesterday. Oh, so wow, that's cool. He, he's, uh, he's a very good dude. The city of Spartanburg, they got a real guy. Yeah. Who cares about family. He cares about well-being and health care. Absolutely. And he cares about education. And I think, um, you know, all politics aside, yeah. um, when you have leadership that is taking that approach, mm -hmm. you can allow some of the other people to do politic things. Yes. You know, allow, you know, the head to focus on the things that really, really matters. Yeah. So he's, it's, it's, uh, we're a tribe because you don't work together versus for sure, like for sure. one person putting all the weight on their own shoulders. Absolutely. So yeah, what, what teams did you play for? Um, a bunch. I got drafted to the Detroit Lions and then I played for the Patriots, Cowboys, um, Chicago Bears, and then the Seattle Seahawks. This is where I retired after playing in the Super Bowl. And um yeah. How was playing in the Super Bowl? It was great. It was uh it was fantastic really. Um as a kid wanting to play professional football. Um, making it to the pinnacle of professional football in that game with the best of the best all the way around. That's what you want to do, you know? So after you do that, it's like, all right, you know, it's, now it's just a game, you know? Like, yeah. Some people love it. Like, you know, I, I think there's a clear difference between your Tom Brady's, Kobe Bryant's, and, you know, guys who uh, have size, some ability. Yeah. And smart to right, understand, absolutely. like, hey, you know what? There's this amount of time that I can capitalize on, you know, my toughness, my size, my absolutely. strength. Uh, and be, also on the back end with your money. Like, yeah, you have to know how to manage that as for well. For sure, for sure. Um, I was one of the guys who uh, never had financial advisors or anything like that. I just saved. Yeah, that's I good though. It. Yeah. That's good though. Cause some people like now, especially now, this now generation. Yeah. You, you're literally just throwing money in clubs just to be throwing money. My, uh, my brother, uh, one of my brothers, he's, uh, he's 31, 32 and he loves that club. <laughs> he man. loves the club life. I have, I have to act like I'm asleep, man. <laughs> be like, I ain't going. <laughs> no, I, um, I went to see uh, Boss Man D-Lo. Okay, okay. I heard that show was crazy, too. The wow. floor, like I have a recap on my on okay. my page, and the opening clip is literally just the floor covered in money. Oh, wow. Like, that's how many people were in there, like, actually throwing money. And I'm like, yeah, wow. Wow. these girls are going to take home some, some, some ducks tonight. But yeah, that's how some people just go and... Throw money. Like, I, I can't. It's not me. It's not for me. I'm not okay. the one. Uh, I've never thrown my own money in the club. I've thrown other people's money, but never my own. I got you. Um, but, uh, that's all. You know what? You could have, you could have invested in something, but you're throwing it in the club. Like, yeah. for, for what though? So, there, there are two mentalities, right? <laughs> and, I, and I can, you know, in order to be, um, you know, just to keep an open mind. You, I always respect everybody's mind and their opinion, no matter, you know, whether it's mine or not. You know what I mean? Right. We all got a different path and a different plight that we have to take. So some people spend money like that as a motivation to make it back again quicker. Okay. I and, see. I see where you're going. All right. So... 
to each his own. You're right. I, I'm like you. I don't. I don't ever judge anybody's mind because just because you think a different way, that doesn't mean I still can't learn something from you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I respect their mind, and if that's how they got to do it, uh, just you know, just take care of your responsibilities. Yeah. And understand that um, the rain falls on everyone, right? Right. Like at some point in time, you're gonna have to make really tough decisions. Yeah. So, um, in those tough decisions, will you go back and think about, damn, I should have not eaten yeah, a 10K in the joint. Uh, 1K, 100, 500, whatever, but like these guys go, you saying the whole floor is covered with money. I'm going to imagine it's a, a minimum 2,000 square foot, uh, building. Um, we can get the engineers out of here. <laughs> The, the, te- <laughs> the technicalities of what that would be to cover the floor and money, even in ones. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot. Just the stage alone. Uh, shout out to the strippers, man. Yeah, you know, shout out to them. Yeah. Y'all, y'all did y'all thing. Yeah, hey, do your thing. What was your favorite team to play for? Do you have a favorite one? Let, so, wait, wait, so wait, wait. Let, don't answer. Okay, let, okay. Me re- let me rephrase this question. Okay. You can still answer that one. So let me rephrase it this way. Before you went to the NFL, did you have a team? And now that you're out of the NFL, do you have a team? Okay, so uh, that's a, I love this question. This is <laughs> so growing up in a small town in like Spartanburg, um, like I didn't care about the NFL team. I didn't care about like colleges and all that type of stuff. Um, I cared about the high school team. Okay. And, uh, so that was my team. I was like interested in, you know, playing for my high school team, uh, getting the approval and the love from, you know, the, my, your community. my community and my hometown. Uh, because that's what you're exposed to. Like, you know, right. that's what seems exciting. We got the newspaper at my house. So, like, to see your picture in the newspaper, newspaper yeah. uh, as a kid, it's like, okay, all right. That's I'm a, doing something. Yeah, I'm doing something. So, that's a great, it's a great first step, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, going to Ohio University and, and getting away from Spartanburg, in a sense, just, you know, you meet people from California, you meet people from Ohio, you meet people from di- just different. Yeah, out of the country. Like, out of the country, everywhere. everywhere, all over the place. And uh, their experiences that they share with you kind of. Help shape you. Or expand your mind. Yep. In, a, in a sense to be like, hey, you know, that's possible. That's crazy. You got, you mean to tell me in high school, you went to Paris and stayed for six weeks and studied abroad? Like, yeah. So fun fact. The high school I went to, um, I didn't go on the trip, but they went to um, they went to Paris for a week. Right. Uh, so, I remember yeah. my brother going. He was in the orchestra, and I used to always be like, "Oh man, he played a violin." Da, 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 da. But I think they went for like two weeks in the summer. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's so much to do. Yeah. It's you know, a few days. You're not gonna. You need to stay for at least a week. No, no. I mean, that was crazy. But I didn't have those aspirations at that time. I was concerned about being a football player. Right. And uh, I always said to myself, hey, um, if I make it to the NFL, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to open business because that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to... And you're doing that. Yeah. You're doing I was trying well. to like rob the bank. I was like, man, <laughs> just give me three of my best years and I'm taking, you know, and yeah. I'm going to... I just need a low piece of the pie something. and I can, I can maximize yeah, the rest. I can make a shake after that. Yeah. Um, but I just needed, you know... Uh, a, a landing pad or a, a catapult. So okay, yep. Um, football, I owe a lot to it though, you know. Um, but hold on, we're getting too okay, far. You I didn't mean, have a team going in, so I mean, who's your team coming out? I don't, I don't have a team now. I mean, I just respect the game and I um, respect what the athletes do uh, to play that game at the highest level. Okay. Um, you going for anybody in the Super Bowl? Debo? I got to go for Debo because he's the hometown guy. You yeah. know, he's from Spartanburg. So, um, I ball out. Go ball. Like, he's a, he is a staple to the team and what he does makes a difference. Right. And whether they're going to win or lose. So, I'm saying go ball out. 
Go, you know, that yeah. you got the city on your back right now. No pressure. Let's get it. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. None. <laughs> Let's get it. So you, you touched on, you just wanted a little piece to just build off of businesses. So what businesses do you have now? So I started with my two best friends, a valet parking company, which we were doing valet parking in high school, like, oh, wow. for private parties and stuff like that. That's smart though. So that's um, real smart. We were Look, like y'all kids, <laughs> y'all start some ballet parking. And uh, the interesting story about it: so a family friend, Ryan Sims, I, I would call him my cousin, mm-hmm. um, you know, a cousin, brother, whatever to anyone. Um, but he took me, my two best friends, to Miami as seventeen-year-old kids. So uh, he was a first-round draft pick. Uh, we stayed in this hotel called the Teasers. It was like a top floor penthouse type situation. Um, and kind of just exposed us to, um, not like what life is, but like, uh, something different than what you work with. Yeah, exposed like to. South Carolina yeah. and, and doing this and, and like we're 17 years old. And uh, I'm, I remember lying about my age. I'm like, I'm 19. I'm like, I don't think it, don't think it really makes much of a difference, but it did. It yeah, did. At, at the time, uh, I think everybody went through that. Oh, I'm older than what I am. Yeah, yes. but I'm absolutely. I'm, I'm down there. I'm trying to get in motion, and, and I see how. Um, I just see what you can do um, in a small amount of time playing football. He was already doing it. Uh, and he's, he's, uh, Ryan is just this fantastic guy. He's not even like a savage. Uh, like when you think of like football players and how we play the game and like, uh, no, he's just a, a very, he's a gentleman. That's so good. learning, um, you know, learning, okay, I can go do this. I can be a gentleman. Um, I can, you know, achieve at this high level. Like I shout out to Ryan because he was a big, big part in that. Um, but yeah, taking us down there, we, we become, we get closer because we're like, hey, we, this, oh man, this is like crazy. It's like I, bonding and it's I, like you're experiencing these same experiences together. How can I do this again? How can I, yeah. uh, how can we do this again? So, uh, we're doing this valet park and we're going everywhere together. Everywhere they were, I went everywhere. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, the whole, the whole nine. So, we decided to open a valet parking company um, prematurely in Spartanburg because the town was still like a ghost town at right. the time. There was uh, a club called Club Six that he was bringing downtown Spartanburg. So okay. we were going to do valet parking for the, the club. club. Yeah. He had the club. We were going to do our own business, valet parking outside to support the club, just creating this ecosystem of different It's kind of like, um, like the security guards now, because you know, the security guards, if they, if you want to park in a certain spot, most of the time the security guards have the parking lot. Oh, they're doing that? Yeah, they're doing that now. I mean, so it depends on the person, but yeah. most of the time, because security. you know the security guards are separate from the actual club. You hire a security company. Y'all to stepping come on my like business. <laughs> okay. you stepping on your business. Y'all better have your insurance policies together. <laughs> So oh, yeah, so yeah. most of the time that's when that's why it's like, oh I gotta pay sixty dollars. Yeah, because you're paying the you're paying the security. I probably gave y'all Man y'all secrets away. When I was it. yeah, they they shouldn't be doing that, but because they don't have uh we'll get that's a whole nother thing. But security, y'all need to stop doing that. Call the valet company, <laughs> people who deal in parking. Look, and call my guy, right? Yeah, here. because like how are you securing the place and you over here trying to hustle for sixty in the parking lot? You know what I mean? Now, you all clubs I mean? are not like that, y'all. So, not all. disclaimer. Not so, when all. somebody say, if you want to park up here in the VIP, don't question but, the people. But if I, I see know security, if I see security out here, uh, checking people for 60, I know somebody getting in the club doing something they don't got. No I'm teasing. I'm just talking trash. Nice, no, yeah. some of them. Not all. Let me put that disclaimer out there for y'all come for me, y'all come out. You know, we don't know. No. Some of them don't. Some of them do. I'm not gonna specify who does and who don't. And, and, and really, it's okay because I like I'm one of those people who like uh, it's all good until something happens. happens, right? And not you, one of the people. No, I am. No, because you like, should not be. No, because I've been there. 
So you should learn from your mistakes. That's why I don't do that. I do what I do. <laughs> right? But I understand, like, you know, uh, a person that's trying to make it and he's like, I'm going to put 10 things in one spot because, like, I'm trying to... From that from that aspect, yes, you know, I like, see. I'm you got to start. It. But then once you get there, once you, you got to correct yes, it. Yes, you can't so just keep staying there. Because now, these people who are watching this, they know there are different liabilities in parking and security. So... Get that taken care of. That's how you bulletproof your business. That's right. how you don't have to stay at your business and make sure that all these things are going right because you got the proper things yeah, in place. Proper things in place, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I get it. Like I had, at one point in time, I had a car wash, a bar, a grill, a studio. You are in like the back. jack of all trades. Listen, this was all in one spot. <laughs> this was all in one spot. It was called Fresh Auto Spa Cafe. So my vision was to have um, a car wash and a bar and grill so all the moms and the single girls can come and get their car wash, have some good chicken wings, have a fresh car, listen to... Single girls? Yeah, have some... Because that's where... I mean, like, single girls come, you got guys come, create this atmosphere where people were doing trying that. to play like matchmaker in between. A little bit. So, cause, cause <laughs> if you got, listen, if you got all the digital, I'm from the old school, like, you know, I'm, the internet is too easy for people from the old school. Yeah. Like the internet is like, it's terrible. It's, it's, it, it's, I think it's like, it's like a double edged sword because you have all this access well, quote unquote access. You have visual access to things that you think in your mind that you have physical access to. And it causes you to look at the world differently. Now, some people have actual access to this. Some people do not. So it, it changes people's views on things. Cause like the way the world is now, it was not like that for our parents because they didn't have all this access to, oh, that's how she gets treated and that's how she, what's up, that's what she wants. Like it's like, just because, like, people are in, are in different tax brackets. And I'm not necessarily talking about money tax brackets. Like, mentally, they're in a different bracket. Mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. like that. And just because I view things one way doesn't mean that you're going to view it the same way. Or just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. I agree. I agree. I think that with your social media profiles, um, in many cases... um a person can like dissect you from that. True. Whether you believe it or not. Like, I mean, there are only a few people who are going to be like, uh, so who are going to know they're smarter than the algorithm. True. You know what I mean? And be able to use the algorithm to their advantage. Most people are just like, they in the matrix, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, absolutely. Posting their this is this is posting this is the matrix, and, and they're posting what they want to do, and they're and they're doing all of these things. So it's pretty easy to like for like a person that like planned and is strategic, yeah, to line you up from your social. Absolutely, media. but at the same time, I tell people social media is like a highlight. It's not your actual life. It's a highlight of a po- a portion of your life. So your whole life might not, like, these celebrities and people like that, of course, that might be their real life. And half the time, half of them that they were like. True. I'm, yeah. I've seen many a celebrities jump out of a, a little, a little rinky dink home. Oh, facts, facts, like, facts, facts. I I've mean, yeah, them. no, I think, uh, I think there's, there's different, like, types of celebrities too. You got like. True. Absolutely uh, true. You got like Dame Dash style who's gonna double down every single time. It ain't about the flash. It ain't about, you know, and then you got the other ones who are like, uh, and I don't know this guy, but I think about like YK Osiris. Oh yeah. Um, don't know him personally. I don't know if even this is like a facade for, um, the internet. But he is seems to always be in some sort of predicament uh with somebody or something. Um and I, that makes me think of like um you know a person who's super duper talented and they're like just relying on their talent. Yeah. More so than like, you know what, all right, let me let me stop playing all these games yeah. and keep keying and laughing with all these people and get my stuff together. And then, um, you know, 
you know, you come to the table a little bit differently. Yeah, um, I, I've seen um, YK, YK Osiris twice. He was he was nice and sweet, and like he doesn't seem like what he portrays on the internet. Okay, okay. So he was definitely like super respectful, and like there was no drama. Like he was super nice. So, but that's the same for Krishan and Blueface. Like I recorded both of them together. Yeah. And they are the complete opposite of what they were on I the saw. internet. Like they're nice. He takes really good care of her. Like. I mean, of course, when you're, when you're watching it, people are going to dissect it, like you said, and say whatever they want to say, but they were super respectful. They were funny. They they literally had a good time. So I saw Krishan a clip, and she was like on American Ninja Warrior or something. Oh, like, at the, like before she met she Blueface? Was, she was a dog. Like, she was like... like she was, it was like, like a, a 360 or no, a 180. She was a, she was a dog, whatever. like, like a super athlete. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. She was completely different. Like, she talked different. She yeah. looked different. She dressed different. And she was an athlete. Yeah, so I understand probably Blueface sees like the whole, and, and maybe this is all, that's all entertainment. I like, I like Krishan. I think, uh, you know, some of the stuff that she does is probably entertainment. Absolutely. Uh, once you see her, you know, like, this girl is a world class athlete, like, she's running up a mountain, like. Uh, yeah, I've seen that, I've no seen that. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, no, no, like no. literally in the Ninja Warrior yeah, uh, she's competition. Having, she's yeah. She's having fun, and I hope she's being compensated fairly for what she's doing. Yeah, but she also, when Jess Hilarious was, uh, like, trying to reach out to her and help her, she also said, like, I know the internet is, is using me to for entertainment, mm -hmm. so I'm just running up the bag. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it makes sense to, if that's how you're going to get your money and, you know, sustain your lifestyle, then go for it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not with the drama, but... No, and I think there's, like, there's levels to it. Like, um, when it comes to... Uh, that's that is her way, you know. What I mean, yeah. that's her way that she's figured it, it out. It works for her. But there are there are other people who are doing it differently, and the ultimate goal is to be able to uh, build a legacy so that your family, people who look like you, uh, similar struggles don't have to, or even if they do have to endure those struggles, they have a, a, a visual a visualization of someone who's made it out. Or mm -hmm. someone who's used the foolishness and turned it into this, like yep. Peter Pan. I mean, people would say, Pan, think about, people Did you say, say Pan, like Peter Pan. Man, what people in the would say, world? Think about, it. think about this, so really, Go like, ahead. as a football player, you run full speed head first into a person. True. Is that the smartest thing? No. That's why. It? That's why their bodies are are the way they are. So until you realize, like, hey, there are other opportunities and there are different ways to be afforded the lifestyle that I want, uh, sometimes you do different things mm -hmm. uh, to get to that. So, uh, you know, she'll figure it out if, you know, she's probably already got it figured out, you know? She probably does. Yeah. And stuff comes to Forest City that's like secret hidden gems. Yeah. So, like, if you want to go find some J's, Pull up at the Hibbins in Forest City. Oh, Forest City. Yeah, okay. So, and you yeah. you might find, like, exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, I know like. that, like, the... So, I wore them the other day. Um, the Smiley Face um, Air Maxes. Yeah. They were, um, like, purple, blue, like, teal, and pink. They were, like, sold out everywhere, but Forest City had them. Forest City had them. Forest City had them. So, um, I got them there. Are you, like, into sneakers? Not really. I'm kind of, like... I don't really like brands that much. Okay. And and the reason being is because people put so much like emphasis on their self worth based on yeah. like yep. the brand that they have on. And I remember my daddy like telling me like, man, the man made the clothes a clothes. Don't make the man. man. Absolutely. Like all the way, like that's in my brain. So like I challenge myself sometimes. I may go to Walmart and I'd be like I'm gonna pick out some of the crazy, like just something yeah. crazy and see if I can't get real fly with it. And, and but Walmart's sure. stepping their game up. I, I think mean, Walmart's competing with Target, you know, like these other stores. So they gotta, they, they, in order to stay 
in business, they have to keep up. It's going to be how you keep your body looking and how you, like, take care of yourself. That's true. That's true. You know what I mean? That is very true. You put on, you, you keep your body looking decent, you can do whatever you want. Like, you can wear about. anything. But that's yeah. just, like, I feel like if you can shop at Timu, you can shop at Walmart. Yeah. Because, or if you can shop at Sheen. Yeah. Because you're buying, you're spending $3 for a t-shirt yeah. when... What's, yeah. what's wrong with going to Walmart? Yeah, you can do the same exact thing. Yeah, you get what I'm sure. saying? So, as long as it, it's your style and it looks good, it doesn't yeah. matter. What and I don't, like, I don't like culture vulture. So, if I feel like these people are, like, taking advantage of my culture or or um, mm. in any type of way, like, I'm not about to be out here advertising. I don't, you, really, yeah. I don't care if it's comfortable or whatever the case may be. I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's so, a little, it's a little wild. Yeah, it's super wild to me, and I'm just on that side of things to where like all these people where they steal designs, and I see what people do, and I see how mm-hmm. people act behind these particular brands, and I'm not with it. I'm not going. Oh, some act of these, like especially like how they are using these children and. I'm not and, and trafficking and all that. I was like, this is so obvious. Nah, this is I ain't, terrible. I ain't with none of that. I yeah, ain't. absolutely. So now I've definitely um, come to the point where I'm like, oh, let me look into your brand before I start like dumping my money there yeah, because yeah. what's the point? And like you, like especially like for girls, girls can find clothes more inexpensive than a guy can. For sure. So yeah. I'm, I, mean, I don't really care about the brand so much. Like certain things are like, like I like Nike. I'm not even gonna hold it. Yeah. I have about like Nike hats and Nike shoes and things like that. But at the same time, I will have on a Walmart shirt. In a, in a minute, if it's something you like, if it's your favorite artist or whoever they got, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But now they like, you can design your own things. You got sure can. So many like white label, um, yeah. Things that you like, whatever design you think of, you can print it and have it there in like two or three days. So Absolutely. Like, I don't even see why people buy that stuff anyway. It's like because oh, it's it's popular. It's what it's what the celebrities are. Yeah, doing. be yourself. I think it's more in um, in being yourself and and trying to figure out like what what you bring to the world versus uh, what like you can take from the world. Yeah, I think that too, but then at the same time, people put so much money into their appearance and then the way that they're living on the back end, it's like, oh my gosh, I thought that you lived this way because of the way you presented yourself. So it's like people have it backwards. Like, I think I would rather have a comfortable living situation than to care about what you see on my body. I get it. And again, I say, I have, I have buddies who have, um, taken out $25 million in debt. Jesus. And have been on like, you know, they got <clears throat> balloon payments due and they on their wits in and they make the payment and they do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just like where the risk is, where the, yeah, you know, but I mean, but you work. have to be that type of person though. One, in order to take out that amount of money, you had to have set yourself up previously to be able to do that. I don't know, man. I'm you can't. Like, I, you can't just go to the to a lender and say, "Come on, give me two million dollars." No, I'll pay it back. I didn't say two million. I said twenty five. I'm just. I know. I was going out of number. Yeah. I was saying like you can't just like you know I mean, a normal person can't say, "Let me go to the bank and give five hundred thousand dollars." You get what I'm saying? You I don't know. I I think it. I think you can. I just think it's like the level of your risk tolerance. Like, but you still have to be able to be approved for it. Yeah, you do. But like, I mean, so that that brings me back to my point that everyone can't just go and do that. All right, so, so you have to be a, a certain level of do. person already. You do. I, I guess I just think about the extreme situations of like, um, no, nah, this is crazy. But do you remember <laughs> uh, the guy who was posing as a gynecologist? He's a kid. He's a sixteen year old kid and he like probably like six or eight months well I don't know how long he was doing it, but he literally like posed as a, a guy. So was he actually like stop it? Stop how? How? How do you do this? This is what I'm trying to tell you, like <laughs> there are people who are people Wait who have the cojones. Uh, or the gusto or the courage 
to not necessarily know how the outcome is going to come. Don't necessarily have the resources. And that's terrible. What you did, fella, I hope they put you up under the deal because that's terrible. But I mean, in other instances. So how was he getting paid? Was he only using clients that didn't have insurance? I'm not, I'm not like, sure what, what, I'm what not sure is what, working? I'm not sure what he was doing. But um, there are a lot of situations where people. He said he opened him up a DCP. They yeah. need direct property and care. Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> which is absolutely crazy. He said, "No, I'll take no insurance over here." Yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> but that happened. That was a that was a real thing, um, and it wasn't good. So, no, I would I would have sued. Like what? What you gonna sue him for? He's not, he doesn't have insurance. He doesn't have anything. No, you're going to jail, sir. I, for, fa- I, for false, what is it? False, uh, false impressions? Or I mean, I'm something sure. Something like, I've let you inside of my body and you are not even a doctor? Like, come on. Let's I, make, make some I wasn't, I, I wasn't even thinking about the, the body part. I'm just thinking about like how easily people are fooled. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I took it to the body part because like, you know, I have to like, have like, my legs but spread like, open on the table. It just for goes you. to be like, okay, people go to the to the doctor and they they never say, um, all right, let me see your credentials or they could have anything like what's the process and proof. Yeah, but people also don't know the difference between um like the nurse practitioner and the doctor. The nurse practitioner and the doctor can do the exact same things. So some people don't have like a doctor, they have a nurse practitioner. Okay. Okay. Um but the nurse practitioner operates under a doctor. Like so uh, let's say they have like one of my friends, she has a DCP, it's a direct primary care where you don't she doesn't use insurance. You pay her like a monthly fee, like um, like a Netflix. Okay. Um, but she has a doctor that basically like supervises her, but she runs her own practice. But she's the she's the doctor there now. She's working her way up to to do everything. But she, okay. if she wanted to, she didn't have to. She could stay at a nurse practitioner and run an office. Okay. Which is fine. I mean, that's the that's the laws of the land. I think. Right. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, um, if you're Acting within the uh, the laws of the land and your provocations, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what can I say? Yeah, I mean, go for it. It's yeah. less schooling. It's, I mean, yeah. if I can do the same thing, then why not? Yeah. But I mean, I know there's probably more perks with being an actual doctor. So you know, but it's kind of each his own. Yeah, to each his own. Yeah. So I don't think you Yeah, yeah. We yeah. need them. We yeah. need them. Out of your businesses, what's your favorite so far? So I think not businesses. I think the time that I've created for myself is the favorite part okay. about doing businesses. So like, absolutely, um, I agree. Understand. Making commitments is uh, very very tough for me uh, because I, I enjoy my time, you know. And in that yeah. time, um, most of the time, I think about how I can impact the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I were, you know, working or had so many obligations, um, you would always be kind of bogged down with thinking about your obligations and the things that you have to do. Yeah. So, um, um, God has blessed me tremendously with the mind, um, to be able to see, you know, what it is that I want. Mm-hmm. And then I don't also don't have a problem with correction. So, like, I may think this is what I want in this particular instance, and then, like, I have another revelation that leads me to another direction, and I'm completely okay with that. I'm completely okay with the opinions that come with that. Yeah. Um, because no one can understand um, your journey because, like, you're the one that is walking every step of the journey. Correct. You know everything about the journey other people only have bits and pieces of it Mm -hmm. and they do the best that they can to to piece it together Together, for you because you don't share everything. Absolutely. And And you should. And then if you do share everything with them, they still have a different disposition. Correct. So um, that, you know, like your ultimate goal and where you're trying to go is, um, you know, it's going to be your choice and your decisions and everything. And hopefully you find good people that you can emulate in certain aspects along the way. Yeah. I like to tell people all the time, we all live in the same building, but we all have a different view. Mm-hmm. So you you might be on, on floor five and I can be on 
one or 27 yeah. and I could be on the left side you could be on the right side like we all are in the same building but we don't have the same view or yeah. perspective on life so I definitely get it but I definitely agree with the time part yeah. like I I don't think punching somebody's clock would be like for me like I've done it before I mean I think we all have but it's not it is it feels like jail like that's what it feels like to me. It feels like jail. I um have a biology degree, and so I used to make IV solutions, and I used to work for Baxter, and we used to do twelve twelve hour shifts, two days on, two days off, every other weekend. Twelve day, twelve hours a day. Yeah, that's all day. Like, what are you? You don't. And it was like a dungeon. Like, we called it the dungeon. Yeah. Like, it was sterile. Like, we had to garb up. Yeah. We had to, like, wash our hands and do all of that stuff. But there was no no windows. So, it was only, like, walls. I mean, that, that to me, is a trap. It's like, that's yeah. like being a trap. It's like, okay, all right. I know that this 12 hours, at the end of this 12 hours, I'm going to make this right here. So, uh, it's just, like... Th- those jobs are just means to an end. And like as an entrepreneur, I provide a lot of those means to, to an end. end job. Right. So when I talk to the guys about like doing this, I'm like, bro, like, I don't expect you to be here for, forever. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't, you know what I mean? This is here for you to like, hey, I need to make some money today. But and on I the flip side of it. that though, there was plenty of people that were there like my whole entire life and they loved it. They were like, I don't see myself doing anything else. Like, one of those people is my dad. My dad doesn't want to own his own business. My dad wants to get up. He wants to go to work. And he wants to work for someone. He said even if he won the lottery, he would get up the very next day and go to work. He wouldn't even tell nobody he won the lottery. I mean, I feel him. I feel him. I think the routine helps him. I think uh, he probably also has other skills, though. I mean, he has he has a lot of skills, but for him, he's he's like, I like it here. Like, I don't want to move. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. He he likes going up the corporate ladder. He likes that. But at the same time, like, he's not going to quit his job. So if something happened around the house when you were young, who fixed it? Oh my dad. Or he would call one of my uncles. Okay. Or well, one of his uncles, and they would come over and fix and they would it. work it out together. Yeah. Right, yeah. So. so they have like a like. This, a farm the new, type thing. Ne, the new generation, though. Yeah, no, they're not. Gonna they don't they don't have to make the money to pay somebody. To yeah, do it because they don't know how to do it, and there's no knock against them. Yeah, but it's just like, so yes, he can say, okay, all right, I'm comfortable going here making this fixed thing mm-hmm. because I know if something happens at the house I can fix it. I can fix it or I can have I can call somebody so else and do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a that's a friend that's not gonna be like Yeah. These things, these other things. So um yeah, we gotta learn some skills again too. That's what it's yeah, I think is. I think that skills are very important. Speaking of skills, do you have anything else coming up or what you want, like anything going on at Cocoa Bowl that you want to tell people to tap into? Um, I mean, I, I like, when it comes to my companies, I haven't had a company yet that, uh, you know, I could talk all day about all of my mm-hmm. companies. That's not what it's about for me. My thing is about um, inspiring uh, those people who want to be an entrepreneur okay. um, and giving them those ways that they can do so and not feel, you know, I've been through all the emotions of being an entrepreneur. Right. So I'm here to tell the entrepreneur that like uh, those emotions are part of it. Okay. Like when you get those emotions, yeah. that's when you're like, thank you. Yeah, because you know if you, I mean? like, if it, if it doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. That, um, and then, well, for me, to me, I don't, I don't agree with that. I'm like, okay, if it doesn't scare you, it's not big enough, but like, I'm, I'm here for it. Like, I'm here yeah. for the moment. Like, what am I scared for? Like, so if but I But everybody hear, doesn't feel like that, though. Some people are scared. Like, I know, like, for me, I would, like, have a whole panic moment. Like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this happen? But I always seem to make it happen. But that's just my process. Like, yeah. I'm trying to work through it. When's your birthday? In March, the 29th. Pisces? Aries. Oh, Aries, okay. okay. Yeah, my okay. daughter's a Pisces. Okay. Our, our birthdays are 11 days apart. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah. How's the dynamics between you and her? How old is she now? She'll be eleven. <laughs> we um we but heads a lot. Okay. She's she's at the stage where she like wants to try me. Like she and I don't even necessarily think it's like trying me. It's trying to see like who she is and how much she can get away with. And like what makes her happy? Like what like I don't want to do this, so why do I have to do it? Right. You don't do this, so why do I have to do it? But I'm I'm trying to teach her that like I'm wrong. Uh-huh. I've been there. Like I know how to submit to authority. I know how to listen. I know how to do all those things. So, so you know, it's just a no, little bit. No, I'm yeah. I don't have any kids yet. Um, I want some in the near future. Um, and I always think about like. How does a parent handle, because you were not that long ago, um, in her shoes. Yeah. And I think that like, there was no like, in my household, it wasn't like communication, really. It was like, I told you. In mine either, in mine either. I told you what was up and this is how you're going to do it. And Um, no lip, you don't have a choice. No, no, no. You do what I say and that's it. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's. I think that's how it should be. That's probably why I'm got no kid. It's it's a topic for 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 another uh, time. Yeah, it is a topic yeah. for another time. But I will let you ask me one question. We are gonna wrap it on up. Okay. All right. So in five years. Okay. Five years. Where do you see you and I's relationship? Wow, that is like no one's ever asked me that. I don't know because I. So this is my first time, like actually, like sitting down, meeting you, getting to know you, things like that. But I, I also make um like content, manage people, social sites, so things like that. So there's there's some room for some some growth. Okay, okay. So there's some room for some growth there. So okay. that's that would be something that we could talk about. So just in general, just um. Like a very broad, just I don't know. That's a good one. You just you just you just you stop to me there. Um, you just get better and better. I gotta I gotta get my game up. No, I just love to like I have like social anxiety, and a lot of people think because I do this I don't. Um, but just being like becoming more, you know, like friends with people, communicating more, just building myself up. That helps me to, you know, communicate with other people and things like that because I would be like, oh, I don't worry, it's time for me to go home. No, I got you. So, yeah, just like being like keeping in touch, like supporting you and your, your journey and I would hope you would do the same. Okay. I love so, it. So, yeah. I love it. All right. So, I'm going to stamp this for her in five years. Okay. Um, I'm a multi-billionaire. Okay. And we're uh, doing this in a Another studio. Okay. In my um, own studio. Whatever. It could no, be. it's my, it's my own. All right. In five years, it's my own. Yeah. But I, I'm thinking like somebody's like, maybe they want you to, uh, to do the interview. And maybe I say, Hey, when we talk about what we talk about, we only do it with you. I, 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 I'm going to run that back in five years. I, I second that. Okay. So we're going to run this back in five years. Yeah. And he only going to be working with me. That's, how we, that's how we do it. There we go. And you're you're a multi billionaire, right? Multi billionaire. A multi billionaire. That's your, your Instagram handle. Yeah. So yeah, five years we can do it. Let's go. Teamwork makes dream work. You gotta have me on it. We stand for it. Let's go. Thank you guys for watching the XO Mary Mag Show. Please like, share, and subscribe, and tell them where they can follow you at. Follow me at Billionaire Landon, and then from there you can. Do your internet research and go all around. Or LinkedIn, Landon Cohen on LinkedIn. I kind of like LinkedIn. You like LinkedIn? A little bit better now. Okay. Um, okay. Because like, DMs, yeah, it is, it's and DMs and all that stuff. It, like, gets, I all, it gets a lot of hands yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> be doing all that these days. So uh, let's, let's go LinkedIn, Landon Cohen, or, um, yeah, you can follow me at Billionaire Landon, and I'll follow you back. Like, yeah. Like I'm yeah. a community guy. Well, thank you guys for watching. Peace.